Oh. Hello YouTube, I'm Golden H here. Welcome to episode 25 of our Reactor Craft tutorial series. Um, so I thought I'd take a break here from the um, Fusion Plant video and we're going to do another tutorial. So, we're going to talk today about the uh, turbine flywheel. Um, because we, have, we haven't talked about it yet. It's one of the last things, uh, one of the few things in the, in the pack that we haven't talked about yet, along with the di turbine dyno. Uh, but anyway, so the turbine flywheel is quite obviously a flywheel for your turbines. Uh, it's specifically for the um, the regular turbines. The high pressure turbines don't require a flywheel. Uh, to make your turbine flywheel, you're going to need four blocks, um, and it's because this is a multi-block structure. You're going to need turbine flywheel cores, which are crafted um, eight HSLA steel ingots around a steel block, so it's just a big hunk of steel. And uh, you're going to need four of those. Uh, flywheel vibration dampeners, which is just three HSLA steel ingots with uh, six wool, like a sandwich, uh, a steel sandwich. And you're going to need four of those. The turbine flywheel frames, which are uh, base panels surrounding a steel ingot. And I think you're going to need... Sixteen of those, and uh, the turbine flywheel, which is only one of, which is six steel blocks with uh, three shaft units in the middle. So it's a shaft unit sandwich. So it's all a lot of steel. It's, it takes a lot of steel. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I've set up a tiny little uh, reactor here. Um, ominous noises again. So we're going to fire this back up. What? No. Turn on. Let's do it. It hits. Oh, oh, oops. I forgot about putting a block there to stop the steam going away. Okay, we don't want any uh, any laggy messes. So we're gonna let this power up. And if you remember, this uh, six-core um, linear reactor, which is not safe at all, so don't build it unless you are guaranteed not to uh, run out of water. It oop, there goes a the neutron. It's not it's not perfectly well shielded because this is a tutorial world. You need another layer of steel. Or another reflector. Um, this will get up to, of course, 65,000 radians per second, and then the torque max is out around uh, 12,000 and a half, 12 and a half thousand to 13,000 for a total out power output around uh, 850, 900 uh, megawatts. So it's going to um, get up to power here. And we're going to see where it settles. Well, where it doesn't settle, it jogs around a lot. You can see the power fluctuating quite a lot. Um, because every time the seam block goes in, a new power spike comes out. Uh, it's it's uh, torque here is up to about 13, and the power is getting up to around nine, uh, 900 megawatts. Almost a gigawatt. There, we see a 9 there. So it's at about 900 megawatts. Uh, it might go a little higher. I think the maximum torque on these with water is what, 15 or is it 14 something? I don't know. But you're, you're looking at around 900 uh, megawatts. I don't think it'll ever crack a gigawatt. Uh, it gets up to nine and a half. So uh, 950 to. Um, we're going to see if that goes above 950. It doesn't look like it. It looks like our torque is pretty much settling at a maximum of around 14.5. Uh, kilonewton meters and then the uh, megawatts is maxing out around at uh, about 950 uh, megawatts all right so we're gonna shut this off no turn it off <laughs> the right mouse button is still a bit weird um, definitely something I want to get fixed so um, we're gonna let this thing run down don't need that anymore and then we're gonna put the turbine flywheel on it and we're gonna compare the two I wanted to do that to give you guys the uh, best idea of what we're looking at here and what the turbine flywheel is going to do for you and to you because there are drawbacks. We're going to take a look at that as soon as this thing shuts off. Three, two, Come on, big boy, stop turning. I don't really need to wait for it to stop turning, but I kind of want, but I just want to. Just so it's not rotating and making me dizzy while I'm staring straight at it. 
Come on. You know what would be cool would be a, uh, a turbine brake. That you could build onto your turbine. But I don't know if that's realistic. I don't know if, if you break, if you, if you hit a brake on this thing, would it just break the thing? I don't know. Anyway, here's how you build a turbine flywheel. It couldn't be simpler. Um, this is one of the multi-blocks which is designed to have its, its central block placed first. So on the business end of your turbine, on the fat end, place the uh, turbine flywheel block uh, while looking straight at it. So you'll see that the, the red uh, frame is on this side, which is just what you want. Then take your turbine flywheel core and put one on each side. Then take your vibration dampeners and put one in the corners of that. Oops. And then put your turbine flywheel frame all the way around. So you only need 12 of the flywheel frame, not 16. Oops. There you go. And that's your turbine flywheel. I think it looks pretty darn cool. Um, so now we'll attach a dynamometer to that. And you don't need to, uh, the cool thing about the flywheel as well is that it, it, it voids the steam for you. Um, which I guess means if you wanted to collect your steam, you'd have a bit of a problem. Although I don't know if you actually, do you actually, I think you need to attach, you need to attach it directly to your turbine. So, um, from what I understand, it, it voids the steam, um, which could be a good thing, bad thing, depending. So maybe don't use this if you're using ammonia, I don't know. Um, I asked a guy who should be in the know for uh, the stuff with Drake, uh, Frog Fighter, and uh, he says that it, it does void the steam, and, and, it, and it does, when you look at it. it works. So we're going to turn this back on. See, the steam is being voided by the turbine flywheel. And it's going to take longer to get up to speed, obviously, because we've got a gigantic chunk of steel attached to it. Although it still speeds up, you know, pretty quick. But it does take longer, quite a bit longer, to speed up. I, I do like it. I think it looks really cool how it's spinning like that. Ooh, I can't look straight at it from the edge or I kind of start getting dizzy. But uh, as we can see, we have constant steam. So uh, we're going to get a good reading off of this. <coughs> Excuse me. I like the way it rotates like that. It's pretty cool. So the main purpose of the turbine flywheel is to um, smooth out and even out the power output of a turbine. It's especially important if you're going to be using electric craft with it, um, because from what, I, from what Frog Fighter says, every time uh, the power input changes in an electric craft network, it recalculates the entire network. Um, and since the normal turbine with no flywheel is fluctuating literally all the time, um, that, create, that can create a lot of lag. So what will happen up on this flywheel is that eventually, you'll see it's, it's still fluctuating a little bit, but eventually it's going to totally settle down and even out, and it's going to stop this whole little jerky thing that it's doing. Which, uh, I, don't, I don't really know how long that takes, I haven't timed it. But eventually you will see this is going to stop uh, blinking, uh, and we're going to have constant power output. Um, and uh, this is obviously useful not just for that, uh, electric craft purpose, but also if you want to have a uh, constant power output that you don't have to mess around with fluctuating, which is especially important if you're going to attach shafts directly to your uh, turbine and then use uh, junctions to split it, the power up and stuff and gearboxes because you don't want your power fluctuating um, because that'll mess up your, uh, your machines and stuff. And um, this does a little kind of bounce around a little for quite a while, but trust me that it does eventually quit. You'll notice that when it when you first uh, when it first got up to speed, the eight was turning into a seven once in a while. Now it's just the three turning into a one. I don't really know how long it takes, like I said, but uh, eventually it, it should stop uh, fluctuating. We should have constant power output. I mean that's what happened the last time I was using this. So if it doesn't calm down for the video, I'm going to be a little disappointed in it. But that should be how it works. So now you'll notice, anyway, we can start talking about this. You'll notice something uh, quite significant here is that we have a lot less power output. Um, uh, just before, the power was maxing out at 950 megawatts, uh, and it wasn't really dropping below 900. So you were getting at least, uh, you were getting an average of probably around 925 megawatts. But now the maximum power has, has dropped all the way to 835 megawatts. So you are getting about a 100 megawatts power loss. Um, with this flywheel attached, and that's just because it's a giant heavy object and it's reducing the torque output of the, uh, of the turbine. So the torque output, the torque is, being, is, is currently capped at uh, 
12.75 kilonewton meters, whereas before it was going up to uh, 14.5. So yeah, a bit of a loss there on torque. Um, of course, speed stays the same because speed is speed. But anyway, um, so that's basically what it does. The turbine flywheel uh, does reduce the power output of your turbine, um, but it does even it out substantially and give you a much more um, stable power. It, it's not it's not stabilizing totally right now. Um, it was earlier for me, and if it does uh, in a while, I mean, I'll, I'll just let you know. Um, it did as well for me, so I'm sure that's how it's supposed to work. But. At least, even if it's not going to even out completely right now, uh, you'll see that it's fluctuating a lot less than it does without it. Just every once in a, every couple of seconds, a little bit of a jump. Um, but previously, it was never stay, uh, steady. Um, so yeah, that's the turbine flywheel. Again, you don't need to put this on a high pressure turbine. Um, this is just for the standard size, uh, standard turbine. So yeah. Um, now you can see the trade-offs, yeah, a much smoother output of power, but it does reduce your power output. So you'll have to figure out whether this is something that you want to use um, on your uh, on your turbines or not, depending on if you want to get the absolute maximum amount of power out or if you want to get a more uh, consistent power. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to say about the turbine flywheel. Um, hope you've enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned for future episodes. We're going to get back to working on our fusion uh, power plant. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, also I'm, st I'm I'm working on setting up a Twitch uh, account, so you can go. To, uh, there'll be a link in the description where you can go follow me on Twitch to prepare for when I will eventually start streaming. Uh, I may or may not stream while working on the um, the fusion plant, but uh, you'll be able to see when I'm streaming um, some sort of automatic notation thing. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna, it's going to be take a while before that stream gets up to snuff, um, so we're gonna, just going to. You know, slowly make it better as I've never done it before. But anyway, so uh, stay tuned for the, the future episodes in the series. I'm Seth Noich, and I'm signing out.